that in that case. Okay, so this is kind of a stupid example, but it demonstrates some of the some of the basics of GProf. Um, the next example is exactly the same program, except written in Fortran. And it works exactly the same way in Fortran, but you're going to see there's a slight twist. So just to reemphasize that you can call this with any compiler, I'm going to use Intel Fortran. Again, it's just minus PG and, uh, and this source file. So I compiled it, and there's a.out. So I'm going to run it. It's going to take a few seconds. And then it makes gmon.out, and then I use gprof on the executable. Oh, use gprof on the executable, and you have to be in the same directory as gmon.out. So that's kind of annoying, but that's just the way it is. Um, and then again, I'm going to pipe it into less. And you can see that, uh, let me actually pull up the source code real quick, just so you know what the functions are called. So it's exactly the same thing. Instead of set A, there's a module called test module. And there's a function, there's a subroutine in that module called set, which sets this matrix A. Then there is a, another subroutine called transpose, which transposes A. And then a function called trace. So, and then here you can see I did exactly the same thing. So it's not set A, it's just set. And they're in modules. So I'm going to open up the gprof output. Um, and you're going to see this is kind of weird output. Uh, hold on one second, because I think I made a slight boo-boo. I can't believe I just said boo-boo. All right. Uh, let me run it again without optimization. Okay. Now you can see you get some pretty similar output to what we had before. So it's basically the same data. It says it spends about 50% of its time in transpose, about 50% of its time in set. But notice the function names are kind of messed up. And if you were at the name mingling, or like the, the talk on calling C from Fortran and Fortran from C, you'll, you may know why this is. Um, but it's just because uh, it just has to do with the name that the compiler gives functions when it actually compiles them. So you may have seen that this is a function called transpose, but it changed its name when it compiled it to test module underscore transpose. And this would look slightly different in if we compile with gfortran. I don't think there's anything you can do about this. Someone want to tell me I'm wrong? OK, well, if anyone on the internet sees that, has a way of dealing with this. You have a similar problem in C++, but gprof has a, a mechanism for dealing with C++, um, but it doesn't seem to have a mechanism for dealing with Fortran. Um, anyway, you can see similar data. Uh, the function names are a little weird, but you know, you're, you're all grad students, so you can figure it out. Um, and if you go down here, you can see exactly the same table. Um, are there any questions so far? Questions? So one thing I wanted to show was, you saw that like I said there was kind of weird output when I just ran Intel Fortran like this. Oh, you, okay. Um, so let me do that again just to, just to show you what happened. And this, this brings up a good point, which is that why don't I see, um, why don't I see, like it says, okay, transpose spent 0% of the time now. Set spent 100% of the time. What, what happened here? Yeah, so, so this is what, by default, the Intel compiler turns on optimizations. And optimizations, what optim where, like optimizations take your code and rearrange it to make it faster. That's kind of a crude way of saying it. Yes, Nico's here. Uh, is, that, is that a good explanation? Okay, but it basically rearranges your code. So that kind of sucks because now when you look at the output in gprof, you may not fully recognize what you're seeing because you know the code you wrote, not the code the compiler compiled. So, so that's why you should never run gprof with minus O3. Because minus O3, for those of you who don't know, does like maximum optimizations and it's really going to rearrange things. And the output just may not be recognizable. Okay? But can anyone... So uh, can anyone see a problem with running with minus O0, which is no optimization? Well, it doesn't give you real results then on your profiling. Yeah, exactly. Like, you want to, you wanna, like, 
speed up the program that actually gets run, not the program that doesn't actually get run. So, so typically I set my, uh, my optimization level when I want a profile to minus O2 because that doesn't screw it up too much. It's still pretty recognizable, but it's, it, um, it's fast enough that you're getting actual real data out of your code. So it's kind of a trade-off, but, uh, but you'll be able to recognize what's going on. So that's the first trick you have to know is, is run with O2. I mean, couldn't you wind up in a case where the trouble spots you identify are just the ones that the compiler is going to optimize itself anyway? And you could be wasting your time. Yeah, you could. You could. Hmm. Okay. You could probably try to make sure that there's not too much difference in runtime between O2 and O3. Yeah, you could. That's that. So, like, I. That's actually good. Good point, Bill. Uh, that's actually a good question. And like, if there is a huge difference in your runtime between O2 and O3, there's probably something going on that you should know about. I think because, um, so that's an issue. Yeah, I mean, anytime you optimize your code and then profile the output, you might be, uh, you know, you might have a little incorrect data. But in my experience, it's been good enough that, you know, you're going to be able to figure out what's going on. So, uh, but that so it's important that you run with this optimization level. Well, uh, yes. If that's true. Then I'm betting the reason that you have to put the executable as the argument is because it's stripping the symbol table. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's probably. That's why you don't give gmon. Yeah. Or, right. Yeah, gmon that out. Exactly. So that that's probably true. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, let's move on to a real example. That's kind of a not real example. So I ran. Uh, I compiled Cooper and pre-ran a program which took like a few minutes to run. So I didn't want to run it here. Um, Cooper is my code. It's my brother's dog's name. Um, I can show you a picture later if you guys want. Very cute. He's very cute. Uh, oh, this isn't it. Uh, just a, just one moment. I'm sorry. Oops. Cooper builds build prof. Um, examples gutterly gutterly sphere. Okay, so you can see I ran it here because there's a gmon.out. And then I have to run gprof dot dot slash dot dot slash source dot dot slash dot slash source cooper. So that's where the executable is. And if, yes, okay. Um, so this is my code. My code is about 15,000 lines long. So it's a pretty big code. But right away from running gprof, you can tell, you know, and it probably has hundreds of functions in it, right? But from running gprof, you can tell that these functions here are probably like what? This is 40% uh, of the runtime to here, 50%, 60%, 70%. So up to here is probably around 90, 80 to 90% of the runtime. It's just in these like, how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 functions. So right away, gprof has saved me a lot of time because I want to speed up Cooper. And instead of looking around my code, I know all I have to do is speed up these 11 functions. And these like four functions take up 50% of the runtime. So, um, or 60% of the runtime. So immediately you could see how helpful the gprof output is. Um, so what you can see here, let's take a look. So there's this first function is called sequence manager tag get tag data. So one thing I want to point out is sequence manager get tag data is not actually part of Cooper. It's part of a library that Cooper uses. But I compiled that library with the minus pg option and minus o2. So even though it's an external library, I can still look into it. And that can be really important if in this as in this case that external library is taking up 40% of your runtime, you might want to know why that is. You might want to tell the developers. The developers might do something about it. Um, so, uh, so, so one thing is if you compile all your libraries with, with minus PG and minus O2, you can even look into the libraries. So this is an interesting thing because this spends zero seconds per call, but it was called 364 million times. And that's why it's taking up so much time. Okay, So if I wanted to speed up this program, I should look for a way to either speed up what get tag data calls or, as is the case, rearrange my code to call get tag data less. Okay, 
So what get tag data does is it goes to this like kind of database and it 